So Hack Yale is led completely by students. It's students teaching other students how to do web development. Websites give you an opportunity to do something practical very quickly uh, with not a lot of money um, and not a lot of training beforehand. So within a couple weeks of our class, we have students building uh, simple websites. Hack Yale classes are usually held in the Center for Engineering, Innovation, and Design. And we host a variety of workshops here as well. So for example, uh, last semester we had an Angular JS workshop, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator workshop, um, and also like a how to start your first, or when you're starting a company, like what to do in the first week. Hack Yale is very different from the computer science classes that are offered at Yale. And one way that's true is that our material is not going to be as in-depth as the material you'll get in the computer science class, but it's also going to be a lot more accessible to students who have never programmed before, uh, who have never really tried to build a website before. Um, and so that means we take students from all different backgrounds. We'll take a freshman who's gung-ho about being a computer science major over the next four years, or we'll take a senior who wants some web experience because he or she is going to manage content for some blogging company next year. So iGEM stands for International Genetically Engineered Machine. So it's a synthetic biology competition across hundreds of colleges in the U.S. and abroad. So uh, the traditional research is that you work under a PI, a principal investigator, sorry, and uh, they kind of have an overarching project, and so they kind of assign you a project within that. What iGEM allows you to do is it's a completely student-funded organization, so we control the money, we control the project, we make all the decisions, and I think that's an incredibly liberating uh, decision tree. We know a lot of, about the background about biology, but the actual techniques, we know the theories of them, but we don't know how to do them in practice, and it's a completely different game when you get there in the lab. So a lot of it is <clears throat> learning from the graduate students and having them teach you how to use these techniques and what they do and being able to combine these techniques to do some pretty cool stuff. And then that translates to us being able to mentor the next group of iGemmers. And so a lot of it is learning and a lot of it's also teaching. There's sort of two different skills that you get at college. One is what you get through classes when you learn how to do quantitatively things such as, you know, equations, modeling things, doing things in a very like abstract way. And then there's a sort of maker way, like a to-do, hand, like hands-on approach, which is not always sort of funneled through the classes. And Yale Aerospace um, allowed me to gain that approach that of you know, making things with your hands and failing and trying again. And you really get comfortable with designing and testing things. And this really well, I think, complements what you get in classes. Aerospace or Yale Aerospace could be an organization where really anybody could start out, um, no matter what experience level you have, and then we could find a way to make it work. Uh, so in terms of STEM, I guess my main project that I'm working on is Bulldogs Racing. It's a uh, Every year we, will, we build a formula style uh, hybrid car that races with other collegiate cars uh, in a competition uh, in New Hampshire. And uh, sort of the point is to, to build this car from scratch, so ground up, redesign everything and then build everything and test it all out. We try to bring in as many new members as we can every year to try to teach them about the car uh, because that is a large part of why we're doing it is to, to learn about a lot of these subsystems. Um, I may not go into automotive industry uh, after I graduate, but just designing cars on a race car is really uh, a good way to um, do a design project because uh, it gives you uh, a metric that you have to meet and then you can judge how well you did. Um, so a lot of the knowledge base is, is learned outside of class. We're lucky that we have a very cool team composition that, applies, that allows us to do uh, this project. We have an anthropology major who's worked on motorcycles outside of class. We have a couple grad students, one in electrical engineering, one in mechanical engineering. So we learn a lot of what we do from them. Um, and what we can't learn from them, uh, we can usually get from looking at other cars, uh, looking at sort of literature online about what we're trying to do, um, and then just sort of trial and error to see if it works. I think before I came to college, I, I knew that people really valued the liberal arts experience, but I, I thought it was just a buzzword. I thought that it was like an ideal that of course you'd want to learn science and humanities, but didn't really know the practical parts of that. Because what I saw were people who were engineers in industry who didn't really need to know what Plato had ever said, right? But they had like a very intense engineering degree and that's what they did day to day. 
But working in the startup world after school, I now realize that it, you really do need both parts. And if you're going to work for a tech company, you have to know the science because it's, it's your entire product that you have, to, you have to know in and out. But, I mean, one of the most helpful classes to me at Yale was English 120, where you learn to really articulate your thoughts and put it down on paper in a way that sounds like your voice and can really tell a convincing story. And that's probably 90% of my job right now. So if I had gone to a school that engineering was the main focus, or if engineering is kind of isolated from all the, other, um, all the other fields of study, I would definitely not be as prepared as I am now to kind of go out to the startup world and do such a big change from being an engineer to being more on the, the business side of science.